So why is it so difficult to change? Why can't you change how you behave? We've all had that experience of getting up and being like, all right, today I'm gonna to do so much work, I'm gonna do exercise, I'm gonna eat all the right food, I'm gonna you know, be the best person I can possibly be, and then it all comes tumbling down and you know we don't do any work, we faff about, whatever it might be. And we're like, why is this so hard? And it turns out there are good reasons. Well, the headline item is that change is essentially a kind of death for us. So in order for us to change and to grow and to develop new patterns of behavior, parts of us have to die. And it feels literally like a kind of a death. And that's why there's resistance to it. There's fear in the nervous system. At the, at the level of the body, there's, there's actual physiological fear at our attempts to change how we behave. As you've gone through life, we've essentially taken, taken on different ways of surviving in the world. We've adopted certain patterns to meet our psychological needs and physical needs as well, though in the modern age it's mainly psychological needs. So we got needs first and foremost to kind of fit in, to get acceptance and approval and love, to be cared for by others, um, to be able to socialize so we can get a job and, and you know pay rent and, and so on and so forth. Everyone kind of adopts, based on their genetics and their environment and their nature and nurture, they kind of adopt different ways of being in the world. So there's some people that are like, they put a lot of effort into being funny, right? Or some people who put a lot of effort into, into working really hard and building a career. Um, and people can do this in unusual ways as well. Like I saw a guy on the news the other day who was a, a football fan and he was tattooed from head to toe in the emblem of his football club. You might think, why does anyone do that? It's because he can, he can build a life around it. He can build a psychological identity and use it to meet his needs because he then knows who he is. Like, I'm, I'm this football fan. He gets up every day. He knows he just has to support that team. He goes down to the stadium. He probably gets loads of attention. Get, people buy him drinks. It's like a cunning survival strategy to get your needs met, in a sense. <laughs> there are many, many incredible ways that humans take on identities and worldviews and beliefs and patterns of moving and behaving and relating in order to survive. And the key point is that once we've taken on some of these identities and patterns and behaviors, we tend to stick with them. Because they work, the body holds onto them. They get woven into the nervous system, into our conditioning. And so we can't just, we can't just let them go because it becomes a part of us physically as well as psychologically. The body likes to hold onto it. So there's this word homeostasis, it means same state. And humans are very homeostatic. Once we've found a groove, we really like to stay in it. And we'll be very, very resistant to change. And that's why even though there's that little voice in your head saying, oh, I'd really like to, um, to change how I behave, there's a huge amount of resistance because you, you'll run into like a, a fear of letting go of your survival. To one part of you, it feels like growth. To another pure part of you, it feels like death. And there can be all sorts of reasons for why we take on these patterns and not all of them are very obvious. And, and I'm talking specifically here about dysfunctional patterns that we might want to change. Like procrastination is, uh, like I kind of alluded to at the beginning of this video, can often be something like a fear of failure. It's like maybe we were shamed by our parents for not doing well enough at school. And so doing work is kind of associated with that being shamed, that feeling of shame and that fear of failure and fear of disappointing someone. And so if we even contemplate going near work, unconsciously, it's like, no, that's not safe. We're gonna be shamed. We're gonna be kicked out of our tribe, stay away. Or someone who has a lot of anxiety, for example, I was with someone, a client, uh, this morning. Part of her wanted to let go of this anxiety she was experiencing, but another part of her was afraid of letting it go because then her family wouldn't take her seriously. They'd be like, well, what are you talking about? You've been, you've been fine all along. You know, she was trying to get be seen by and understood by her family. And it's like, if, I, if I'm better, then they won't see me. They won't understand me. They'll just go, they'll, they'll think I, I was faking it the whole time. And there was fear of that. So it's like having to hold on to the anxiety. These are all st survival strategies that s seem counterintuitive, but there's a deeper reason for why we're holding on to ways of being that cause us suffering. 
So this is why that growth is death, because it's got to be death to these survival strategies, which are woven into our identity. They are part of us. And this can be death to a particular pattern of behavior. So like with the procrastination, that fear of failure, fear of being a disappointment has to die, essentially. Or another way of putting it would be it has to be integrated, become whole again. That fear that's been pushed down has to be reintegrated into your being. Another aspect is the worldviews and beliefs we hold sometimes need to die. And we hold on very tightly to our worldviews as well for the same reason that they meet our psychological needs. Our understanding of the world gives us a sense of like, okay, I am here in this world that's this particular way, like it's safe so I can go out and be myself, that's great. Or it's unsafe so I've got to hide, you know, and, and be really careful. We can, based on how we perceive the world, that affects our survival strategies. And when someone questions our worldview, it feels very, very threatening. And that's why it's very difficult to, to, to very unusual people to change their worldview, in fact. And it's only under, under duress, generally speaking, do they do so. So a really good example is like this whole, the, the transgender debate in the public sphere, for example. Why do people find it threatening, the idea of fluid genders? It's because they've got used to this, you know, world, you just go, okay, there's men and there's women, and that seems very stable and familiar. And if you question that, it's sort of questioning some of the real foundation stones of their worldview and their reality. And that is very unsettling for them. So it's got nothing to do with like gender per se. It's to do with the, the threatening of their safe, familiar understanding of how reality is, which affects their ability to survive in it. Our survival patterns and us getting through life depends on us not changing. This is why it's so hard to change because we've got up, we've got this far by not changing specifically and just tweaking on the edges so how do we actually change you can't get that far just by working at the surface level of like okay i'm procrastinating i've just got to try and like focus i've got to write a better to-do list i've got to buy a special journal um <laughs> or something like that what you've got to do is you've got to get to the fear at the root of the change that that fear of death of some part of you so if it's procrastination, it might be that fear of failure and deeper than that, that fear of disappointing your parents. And so if you imagine, for example, if you saw your parents and you went back to your childhood and went to like some memory of when, you know, they were disappointed with you and you can feel the shame and the pain in your body and the aversion to that shame. It's like that's where you've got to be working because that's the root of the procrastination. And I won't go into too much detail. I've got other videos elsewhere that um, talk about how to process emotions and, and work with these parts. So you can go check them out on my channel if you want to learn how to work with these things specifically or to send me a message. But you want to always find the hook. Essentially, there is always in any behavior that we have, there's a hook somewhere that's where, where we're holding on to it for dear life because we need it. Even if that sense, even if that whole thing is unconscious. So it's always about asking, it's like, what am I getting out of holding onto this behavior? What do I fear would happen if I let go of this behavior? Like, what, what do I fear would happen if I stopped procrastinating? If I got on with this project that I'm avoiding, what would happen? It's like, how, imagine moving towards it. Imagine filling out your tax return or whatever it is that you're avoiding. Notice, notice like the discomfort you feel in the body. It's like, ah, it's like, I'm gonna get it wrong. They're, you know, the tax person's gonna be annoyed at me. It's like, you can, you can just feel these different unpleasant emotions coming up and that is what is driving the behavior. And to change the behavior, you have to work and integrate the emotions that we're avoiding at the root of it and that are driving and fueling that behavior. And there are limits to how much we can change and at what rate people, the nervous system can only change and integrate at a certain rate. And you'll notice some people change very, very quickly. Other people basically don't change their entire life. <laughs> Both of these are fine. You just got to find your own pace and stick with that. Because if you try and change too fast, you'll uh, you'll get a bit of a backlash, and you'll and you'll actually start taking more steps back. You'll take two steps forward and then three steps back. So you've got to find your own natural pace. A, a facet of wisdom, what I would call wisdom, is actually the ability to like work through different worldviews and beliefs and behaviors and patterns. It's like each each in each moment we're crystallized into a particular form a particular jewel made up of different of these different beliefs opinions worldviews perspectives behaviors needs and so on and it's like a wise person is one who's able to see them for what they are and, and sort of 
rapidly relinquish them and then and then move on to the next set because as you grow you just you sort of integrate and transcend the the different worldviews and beliefs you're sort of not just going from one to the other you're you're slowly learning incorporating more and more perspectives into your being and being able to shift between them and sort of growing in that way and eventually learning to transcend them all so in summary it's difficult to change because we're very afraid of it because we're afraid of parts of us dying that we feel are necessary for our survival and if you want to change and grow as a person it's important to look at the roots of fear and learning how to integrate those find your own rhythm with it and to to grow as you integrate and transcend these different perspectives and uh, behaviors so i do work with people one-on-one -on -one, helping them do this kind of stuff so uh just reach out if you'd like to get in touch and uh, have a quick chat to see how i might be able to help you Take it easy. Bye.